I wish I knew how to quit you. That's the message some Democrats are sending House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi after their fourth failed special election to the House of Representatives, Georgia 6, last week. You should uh, you should see some of these headlines. Oh, by the way, hi, I'm Steve Green. This is Right Angle with Bill Whittle and Scott Ott for BillWhittle.com. And uh, these headlines, are they're kind of nuts. Uh, Democrats seething after Georgia law saying our brand is worse than Trump, which is like me saying uh, this is worse than sobriety. Uh, we've got Rasmussen. 58% of Democrats say their party needs new leadership. And Nancy Pelosi, she fired back. She reacts to calls from House Democrats. House Democrats. Some of them now are telling her to stand down. And she says, how long I stay is not up to them. Uh, you know, Might th- be. yeah. Uh, well, maybe she doesn't know how uh, how elections work, Bill. Uh, seriously, uh, here's the question: Not only does is Nancy Pelosi uh, lost the House, uh, what's what's it been now? Uh, uh, seven years ago, almost. But her minority is shrinking after these uh, after these special elections. Uh, Bill, why can't they quit her? Because she represents everything that the progressive left is all about. She's a champion of that. And she raises half a billion dollars, too, which might have something to do with <laughs> that. Nancy Pelosi is, um, you know, as a standard bearer, and listen, we've had standard bearers that I'm not terribly proud of either, oh, so sure. let me just that, get that, that out that of the way. That goes in every party, yeah. But as a standard bearer, Nancy Pelosi is not a very bright person, certainly not, not an educated person, but she has sort of a cunning, it allows her to get things like, oh, I don't know, one-sixth of the economy changed, rammed down the throats of the American people using all kinds of special, you know, procedures in the in the House and so on. Um, I think Nancy Pelosi was probably a good majority leader for progressivism on the rise, but the problem with progressivism on the rise is... Once it's on the rise, you get progressivism. And once you get progressivism, <laughs> everybody wants to be done with progressivism. And then, uh, and so the person who, who was on the rise is not the person to take you down through the fall because, you know, the one thing we learn about politics is it's, it's cyclic, right? I mean, or cyclic, I guess, which is one of those things. Anyway, you know, just when you think everything's going your way, there's probably the top of the wheel, and then the wheel starts going down again. Uh, but but progressivism and the blue state model, as we understand it, is is Nancy Pelosi's legacy and Harry Reid's and Barack Obama's. And the fact that those um, legacies are being voted out, not in, not only in the big elections, as we as you said, Steve, 2010, the House, 2014, the Senate, 2016, the presidency, not only are they being voted out in big elections, they're being voted out in little elections all around the country. So it's my fervent hope that she stays the um, the head of the DNC for, I mean, uh, whatever she is, I don't know what her, but leader of the Democratic, <laughs> I don't care leader, anymore. Yeah. Thank you. Um, my fervent hope is, that, and we should all sacrifice uh, appropriate animals for the, to, to ball, to make sure that she remains um, the, the leader of the uh, minority, because it's very good for America that she's running the opposite team. Well, Bill, number one, I hope you're right. Number two, I'm not letting you near anywhere uh, anywhere near any of my dogs. Uh, here, here. Okay, here's the thing. The uh, the House special election in Georgia last week was uh, the 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 polls were just about tied. It turned out to be not that close at all. A uh, a four point win for the Republican candidate. So milk toast. I can't even remember her name. But apparently, what really put her over the top were these ads tying her to Nancy Pelosi and people in the heartland. I mean, you get away from the blue enclaves on the coast and people are so turned off by Nancy Pelosi that what should have been a winnable election for the Democrats, they spent $23 million on this thing, turned out into into almost a landslide for, for the Republicans. Scott, do the Democrats have to get rid of Nancy Pelosi if they're ever going to become the major, majority party again? Listen, Nancy Pelosi has been the cause of more money in the coffers of the Democratic and Republican parties over the course of her <laughs> That's last a great point. decade or two. Both sides need her. She cannot go away because she, there's nobody has been a better lightning rod for controversy than Nancy Pelosi has. Nancy Pelosi is sort of their Newt Gingrich. Um, and, you know, when Newt Gingrich kind of faded off into the sunset, uh, the Democrats lost the bogeyman that they uh, that they needed to have on a regular basis in Congress. And the way politics works, we think in terms of, you know, people raise money so that they can elect people who hold principles, who can then I- innate or uh, implement policies. But it's it, the whole process is actually reversed. The whole pr- 
purpose of politics is power. The policies serve the power. If your policy, if your, if your bill, your law can get you more power, then it's worthwhile. It's worth pursuing. That's the beauty of Obamacare. Obamacare isn't about getting health care for anybody. It's about the you know ceaseless employment of Democrats. And now we're learning Republicans as well. Yeah. <laughs> because you see, once they got it, some Republicans are like, oh no, this really plays well. Some of, this, some of the provisions of Obamacare play well in my district. I would hate to ever vote against it. So I think we get deluded by the spin masters in both parties when we think somehow uh, that these people, you know, that Nancy Pelosi rose to power because of, she's a lion of progressivism. She's just, a, as Bill pointed out, she's a fundraising machine and she has a lock on power. Everybody in that caucus owes her something. Boy, that's the truth. Yeah, Scott, let me give you a follow-up. And Bill, maybe you'll want to jump in on this too. You know, time was that if a, a speaker... Uh, led their led the Congress so badly that they lost their majority. They would step down as uh, as the uh, as the House leader of of their party. Why didn't Nancy Pelosi do that uh, after 2010, and why won't she do it after all of these losses? That presupposes requi- shame. Requires a sense of decency. Yes, there, there you go. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Exactly. Shame. I was wondering. It was a, it was a it was a race to see who could get it in first. Yeah, <laughs> you have to have a soul to do something like that. No. Yeah, some sense of some sense of something bigger than your own personal power. All right. Yeah. So I guess it's not just the case of the times have changed. I'm sorry, Scott, I stepped on you there. Well, I was just going to so say, that... at a certain point, you know, who's going to be the person who stands up with enough moxie and enough mojo to be able to pull off a coup against Nancy Pelosi? You can stand up if you're some minor figure and say, I think it's time something changes. And they'll go, oh, you know, nice little boy, run along now. But nobody's got the guts to really raise a resistance movement because they know that you don't kick the hornet's nest unless you plan to set it on fire. And they don't have the power to do that yet. No, they sure don't. You know, I thought I knew how I was going to wrap this up. It was going to be about the the money thing. Maybe it still is, but what Bill said is correct. She's raised over half a billion dollars for Democrats uh, since, uh, I think, since 2006. And that is a whole lot of money. I think the actual figure is something like $568 million that flowed through her uh, through her packs and her fundraising. Because there, there, there's all that liberal money in San Francisco where, 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 where she's base and she's just she's got to run her fist but you have to start asking yourselves at some point when does that money start winning elections if 23 million dollars couldn't buy georgia six against a really weak republican when is it going to start buying elections isn't nancy pelosi a failure but then i started thinking well what kind of shape would the democrats be in if nancy pelosi hadn't raised 568 million dollars over the last 10 years so democrats i got some real bad news for you nancy pelosi might just be as good as it gets. And that is your right angle on that. I'm Steve Green. Thanks for watching. It's made possible by the paying members of BillWhittle.com. If you like what you see, click on over. Consider being a member yourself. We'd sure like to have you on board. And we'll see you next time. You know, she reminds me of the show, The Producers. You can make more money on a flop than you can on a success. (laughs) 